Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's noon. It simply just must be time for our weekly busy webinar. My name is Trigby. I'm the director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. With me, as always, is my faithful sidekick, Jenna. Say hi, Jenna. Hello. We are uh, talking about how to grow your business with email and social media today. So, <clears throat> uh, you think we can get through this whole thing in an hour, Jenna? Oh, I think so. Okay, perfect. A couple of things before we begin, uh, just some housekeeping things. If you notice on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a blue bar that tells you that you can add a question. I'd encourage you at any time, if you have a question, Jenna is here to stop me from rambling on and on and on and answer any questions you might have. For those of you participating live, this is your opportunity to participate even virtually. So let's take a sec before we get started to make sure that that works. If you can go ahead, let us know where in the world you are by entering your city and state on the right-hand side, just so we can do some technical stuff to make sure it's working. We'd appreciate it. And while we're waiting, we'll say, hey, John, have you caught me uh, Pokemon yet today? <laughs> Not today. Um, I did get one yesterday, though. That was in my living room. Really? I tried that, too, and I found there was one in my office, and then I got kind of scared that there was a tiny creature in my office that I didn't, <laughs> didn't know about. There. Well, it's a digital one, anyway, not a actual. If there was an actual mouse in the office, that would be a different story. <laughs> I'd actually be fine with a, with a digital mouse in the office, or a real mouse in the office, because that's something I could probably understand. I think uh, that's... It's one of those things where I just immediately feel too old for that. So, um, did we get anybody uh, making sure that we're, we're working and getting everything working? Uh, we don't have any comments yet. All right. Well, let's uh, let's just uh, let's just get started and, and uh, hope that it works because I think we did it right. I think we're all good. So perfect. Let's... It says it's going. <laughs> and again, if you can't hear us or anything, feel free to leave a comment, and I will. Yes. Poke trig me and we'll fix out, you know, whatever's going on. By all means. So <laughs> uh, I should really stop putting a picture of me. I should put a picture of the two of us together because we always end up doing this together. So my name is Trig V. I'm the director of post development here at, at Busy Web. If you'd like to get a hold of me after the fact, because we are going to be whipping through a ton of information very, very quickly, I will share with you a quick, fun way to get the PowerPoint afterwards. But if you want, please write my email down and I'll be more than happy to share. And again, uh, if you want to ask questions live, just go ahead and hit that right-hand side. Uh, and uh, thanks, Dee, Dee for letting us know that it's working. Uh, that question's on the right-hand side. If you want to ask a question, by all means. We're about 30 seconds ahead of you, but Jenna, if you ask a question, Jenna will interrupt me and my train of thought, and we'll back up from there. What do we do here at BusyWeb? We're a full-service digital marketing agency. That means we can take you from having absolutely no brand whatsoever to having a full brand, having a full digital footprint, including social media, including uh, a great website and everything in between. So if you're interested in, in learning more about us, you can reach us at busyweb.com. And uh, we've been in business here for 16 years. We, we incorporated in 1999, back in the dark ages of the internet, time in my life I like to call college. And we're based in the Northwest Metro here in the Twin Cities. We've got a team of going on 17 people now. That was the start of when we moved into our offices two years ago. You can see there's only seven of them, but we've grown exponentially since then. You're always welcome to stop by the office. You're always welcome to, to, to join us here at The Hive, but uh, we'd love to, to chat and learn more about you as we get started. So here's what we're going to do today. First, we're going to talk about small business marketing today, why this is... Uh, why it's changing and why it, th this, the changes are actually made to your advantage. I'm going to go over some simple steps to setting your goals specific to you. Normally, in a, we do this in a, in a classroom setting, so I'm going to have to trust that you're, you're doing some of the, the work on your own. Then I'm going to show you some different tools that really help drive action to your messages and how to choose the right place to promote your message. Uh, next, we're going to talk about how to measure your success, because like you'll often hear if you're not measuring your marketing, we'll talk about that. And then uh, finally, how to get started and where to start more appropriately. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Let's start with small business today, small business marketing today. So it seems like there's a lot to keep up with in this day and age, and you only have so many resources and so much time in the day to do it. But 
there, there is something that you have to offer that nobody else does. So let's get into it. Back in the day before the internet, there was a, a fairly simple marketing idea that uh, uh, was presented as sort of business 101, and that was known as the sales funnel. You spend a lot of time great garnering prospects, you spend time trying to convert them into customers, and then once they're customers, they're actually in the shop. This is a, a pretty standard thing. All of you should know this. All of you should have seen some version of this. It's, it's uh, pretty commonly well known, but the problem is it's actually wrong. In this day and age, digital marketing tools have completely flipped the funnel. So you're gonna spend the majority of your time keeping your customers. You're gonna spend the same amount of time converting customers to clients, but in terms of actually garnering new people and new prospects, that's, that's easier than ever now. Simple fact of the matter is, that Anytime somebody does a Google search to find you, they're also going to find 200 other people that does the same, do the same thing you do. So holding on to those people is going to be incredibly important. <clears throat> How exactly do we do that? Well, you have an advantage. You get to be your unique self, and you get to be the face of your company and the person that people associated with your organization. You get to be your authentic self. Big brands can't do that. So today we're going to talk about some of the ways you get to leverage that advantage. So question for you, how many of you have ever learned of a restaurant or an event or a business or something because you've seen something posted or shared by a friend on social media? That's because engagement is the new word of mouth in business. Because of all the different social media channels and email channels that there are out there, social visibility allows your customers to actually reach out and do a lot of the typical work that you would do on your own. We're gonna try and figure out how do we leverage these people and how do we get these people actually in the door. This I threw in for Jenna's benefit because she's, yes. she's a cat person. I appreciate it, Jeremy. <laughs> so with all the ways to communicate, there's clearly not enough time in the day. How do you decide where to spend your time? So the question I want you to ask yourself is, are you really spending your marketing budget in the best way possible? And that's not just to say money, it's also time. This is not an uncommon challenge for a small business. You've got tons of platforms that you're always being told by great aunt Susie every single time you have a family dinner that you just have to be on and you have to manage all at once. And that pressure is actually a disadvantage. So let's start with the basics. Question for you, what is the number one cell phone app in the world? I will actually take a moment to see if anybody wants to answer this question. I'd love it if you could go to the right-hand side of your screen and where there's a blue bar at the top. Feel free and throw an answer out here. I bet we're gonna, I'm gonna ask Jenna what her answer is because uh, <clears throat> while, while we're waiting for you to fill in. Hmm. I'm gonna guess Facebook? No, Facebook is wrong. Oh, <laughs> I tried. Would love it if you can just go to the right hand side and enter any guess. If not, that's okay. We'll just move on. Yeah, let's just give it a minute here. Unfortunately, we're at a little bit of a delay because we, um, as we're presenting, it takes about a couple of minutes for everyone at home to see what we're seeing. So they may just be hearing your question now. Yeah, that's probably true. I always try and get ahead of myself, I guess. <laughs> so the, <clears throat> the answer is not Pokemon Go. Despite, uh, despite but probably the, now it is <laughs> the last week to the contrary. The actual answer is email. More than half of emails today are open on a mobile device, and so as a result, as we're trying to build a marketing tool and marketing engine for you, we want you to focus on email because, simply put, it's one of the most accessible ways you can be seen by your customers. Email marketing is hard to beat for real marketing value. It still has the highest amount of delivery and highest amount of response. Uh, the Direct Marketing Association of America reports that uh, for every dollar spent on email, you should get $41 back if you're doing it the correct way. So email is a great way to reach your clients and customers, and it's going to allow you to manage your relationships with them in a really great way. Oh, yeah. We had a little bit of a lag because now we have the answer. So Google was the guest. Google, Google, thanks app. for answering. The answer was was email. But thanks for playing. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll be sure to send you a parting gift. We'll be sure to send you BusyWeb, the home game, in the mail just, <laughs> just very, very soon. So here's the goofy part of life today. We actually trust strangers. 
In today's world, we tell everybody about what's happening through social media channels. 46% of people report that they rely on social media when they're making a purchase. And even more strange, 88% of people find online reviews as trustworthy as a personal recommendation. This means your current and potential, potential customers are spreading the word about you as far as social media can reach, which is pretty far. Based on the new marketing funnel today and the knowledge of how email marketing and social media play into that success, I want to give you an example of how a yoga studio uh, was able to leverage this new marketing funnel. <clears throat> now nah, we'll just skip on. We're running short on time already. I'm trying to push the pace as quickly as I can. So <laughs> let's talk about setting goals. Every business or organization has one or two major objectives they're trying to achieve. So with so many options in the online marketing world, it's easy to lose sight of what you're ultimately trying to strive for. So that generally results in losing time and not seeing a huge amount of benefits. So it's really important to be clear about what your specific objectives are in order to determine your marketing strategy. So the question I have for you, and this is not something we're, we're gonna stop and expect an answer, but think about this on your own. At the highest level, what is your organization hoping to achieve? Well, a lot of us have fairly similar goals. My guess is if you're hearing my voice, you probably have one of these couple ones. Like, first of all, I wanna increase sales. Obviously, the more money in the door, the better. Or how about drive referrals, drive repeat business? Might be a question of engagement. How many volunteers can you re-engage? How many new members or advocates can you get telling people about you? How do you reach new customers? How do you reach new donors? And finally, how do you nurture the relationships that you already have? So if you're thinking to yourself, I wanna do all of these things, that's probably a, a, a fair assessment. But at different times of year or during different life cycles of your business, your goals might change. This is when you need to be careful about spreading yourself too thin. Trying to achieve too much all at once is gonna take you away from your ultimate goal, which is growing your business. So think about this. If you had to prioritize, how would you rank what you see on the screen right now based on the importance of your organization's need to grow? As you do that, I want you to think about that one thing as your main objective that we're gonna work on throughout this, this webinar here today. Okay, great. Now that you've determined your own <clears throat> objective, now we're gonna narrow it down and write some goals that are gonna make sense for you. <laughs> if it'll click through. I think. There we, <laughs> there we go. So let me ask you this. How many of you have sent an email or posted something to a social site without actually setting a goal, answering these questions that you see on screen. My response to your answer would be, how do you really how do you really know if you've been successful if you haven't really fully defined what your object objective is? So when you're writing goals, it's really important to understand who your target audience really is, who you're trying to reach. And then it's <clears throat> also really important to set real tangible numbers that you can then qualify later to really understand if you've been successful. Finally, you need to absolutely put a timetable on any marketing effort that you do to really close the book and create closure as to whether or not it's been successful. And make sure it's a, a realistic one as well. I'd like to grow BusyWeb, I'd like to triple BusyWeb's business by the end of the month, but that's not a really realistic goal by the end of the month, considering it's almost the 15th of the month and we do pretty well as it sits. So I wanna take a little time and let you write your own goals. I want you to keep in mind that it's probably best for you to think short-term, like uh, maybe monthly or quarterly, and you can go big when you, get, when you uh, review this a second time and uh, take a step back and really look at this. So while you're writing down your own marketing goal, I'll talk through Half Moon Yoga and talk about how their goal was set. So. What they want to do is what they wanted to do is get 100 new likes on Facebook and grow 
uh, their current membership. Uh, the time in which they wanted to do it was over the next three months, and they wanted to grow their average attendees by at least 10. So they wanted to have every class they had, they had 10 new people. So as you're writing your goal, I want you to think, who am I trying to reach? What am I trying to accomplish? And what's the timetable in which I'm going to be doing it? Take a couple seconds and work through that. Have you got it? I have one <laughs> in my head. You don't count. I know I don't count. <laughs> I think you. So have, to make everyone feel better while you're doing your own. I think you have about you. thirty goals in your head. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Now that you've got a goal, let's pick your platform and choose the right message. So. We've decided kind of what we're truly after. We made a tangible goal to measure our success. Now let's try to design the, the specific message that helps us get us there. So the first thing we wanna start on is focus on the audience you're trying to reach. Where are they spending your time? For the most part, that will always include an email inbox. That's why email is such a compelling channel. The same is also true though for social media and you need to figure out where you need to be to reach, to reach that target audience. So remember at the beginning of today's session, we talked a little bit about how your audience engages with you online through email and social media. So how are you supposed to decipher which platform is right for you? So here's uh, some pros or cons. So what do you think is the percentage of email that actually get del gets delivered in the inbox? Jenna, do you have a guess? That actually gets delivered. Sixty percent. Sixty percent would be a good guess. It's actually closer to ninety. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's better than I thought. Thanks for playing. We'll meet. <laughs> we'll get that copy of Busy Web the Home Game to you good. real soon. Just as soon as we figure out what that is. How about social media? What do you think the largest social media site is to date? Well, I've shown it on screen. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's obviously clearly, Facebook. Clearly Facebook. <laughs> well, what do you think is the percentage of Facebook fans that see businesses in their news feed? Okay, this one I know is low because yeah. they update their algorithm like every week and make it harder. So I'm going to go for 20%. 20% is close. It's actually Ooh. 2%. Ouch. I'm sharing this not because I want to downplay the importance or the use of social media. It actually plays a really big role in online strategies. But where, where email lacks, social media makes up for it. And that's where, and where social media lacks, email makes up for it. That's why we don't recommend one or the other. We actually recommend working in concert with the both of them. Here's another cute picture for you, Jenna. Aww. We try and leverage both platforms, social and email, to get the maximum exposure we want to seek. Combining that social media and email is great for gathering followers and then building a great reputation online. Typically speaking, small businesses who combine email and social tend to see about 73% more customer engagement online. They tend to grow their business by about 57% and even receive 39% more business referrals. So there really is a great importance to having the two work together. <clears throat> One of the reasons is to, uh, and, and how that exactly works is because we've talked about the data and why this is certainly the best strategy, but here's a, a, a direct result. This is a, an email, and it, this is a, a, an email for something as simple as one or two new, new items on the menu. And in order to get there, all you have to do is click a button. In addition to that, there's ways to share this on social, there's ways to grow your list, and ultimately have a butterfly effect as this works. So the credit, what, if you could share all the email marketing content you have on Facebook, don't you think that would be a great benefit to your social media? Well, it would, it would increase your visibility, it helped grow your list, it saves some time, all in one simple, simple thing. So here's an example of how that actually works. So we've got the email on the left, on the right, all we do is post something very simple and benign, on our Facebook page that ends up pushing traffic back to our website, pushing people back to that one call to action, which is simply making a reservation. So continuing on the email plus social solution idea, 
you get to combine forces outside of your message when you have the things work together. We recommend Constant Contact. Constant Contact has a great set of tools to promote social media inside your message. And in this particular instance, you can see clickable links to your social pages inside your emails. The, the value to that is you not only drive traffic to your pages and you get valuable tracking data, which is going to tell you which of your social media sites your subscribers are actually using the most. So when you compare the amount of uh, uh, oops, when you compare the amount of traffic to um, <clears throat> where your customers are, it uh, actually it helps you define the value of social, social media. Constant Contact provides you with great tools to help you do that, but really any email service provider would be able to do that. We really recommend Constant Contact. So um, next becomes the question, that, that uh, everybody asks here in Minnesota, which is, well, that's all fine and good, but uh, <clears throat> how do I do this and how much time do I need to spend doing this? Well, by and large, we recommend a frequency of about three to five times a week. We encourage you to use automated tools in order to do that. And that's, uh, there are a couple of things that we'll get into and we'll talk about it a little, little later. For email marketing fre frequency, monthly is the most common, but it's also a good idea to add an unexpected message every once in a while, just to throw things up. Generally, what we do as, as a baseline for our clients is one email newsletter and then one, um, uh, one promotional email. So I'm gonna take a moment and stop and say, hey, do we have any questions? Uh, doesn't look like we have any typed in yet, but um, as we're going through, feel free, you guys listening at home, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in on uh, Google and we will get them answered. Okay, perfect. Let's move on and talk about how we're going to build relationships through content. Content is all about your audience, not about you. In order to reach your goal for the long term, it's not just enough to choose the platform that's best for you and immediately start promoting a specific agenda. Why is that? It's because people don't enjoy being sold to. What they do enjoy is getting content that not only speaks to their interests, but also enables them to overcome a challenge, achieve a goal, or even learn something that they might not have already known. So 61% of consumers are more likely to buy from a company that provides them with valuable con custom content. So there's really an impactful connection between offering something your audience cares about and their likelihood to buy from you. What your job is, is to find the right balance of offering enough valuable content without giving away the store and also promoting your end goal, which is driving sales and new opportunities. So here's what I would suggest. 80% of the time, provide valuable content. 20% of the time, promote your business. This is what we refer to here at BusyVeb as the 80-20 rule. What exactly is valuable content? Well, we'll get into that in a little bit. Well, <clears throat> specifically, uh, valuable content and promotion are two different things, as I said. So valuable content would be, here are three common mistakes on your taxes for uh, promoting your business that say, let us do your taxes. And see, there's a, there's a fine difference between the two, but ultimately we, we wanna do about 401 and one or the other. So let me give you an example of how this guideline uh, impacts your long-term goals. Uh, I recently worked with a, a real estate agent who really couldn't figure out how to maintain relationships with his recent home buyers. After uh, they closed, he obviously didn't work as closely with them, but he also knew that he, those people were going to be essential for word of mouth for their new clients and their new friends. So think about it from the client perspective. They just bought the home in their dreams, and a month later, they get a newsletter about the newest homes on the market. That really doesn't make you feel valued, right? Clearly, he need, the, our, our agent needs to maintain the relationship in a very different way. So what we did is we split off his list into recent home buyers and other people and began sending them a variety of emails about things like how to maintain your gutters or ideas for new home decor or a great plumber in the action. 
area. The call to action that we wrote for him was always to share the message with your friends and family. So even those people who uh, were had our, he had already sold a home to, he was then getting them to act as a de facto sales agent and because he balanced his content more effectively. Great way and a great exercise that I encourage you to take a look at is to turn your interactions with your customers into content for your email. So each and every one of you listening to me right now has different questions that you get asked on a regular basis. It's what's kind of more, more commonly known as frequently asked questions. Think for a second about the last interaction you had with somebody with your organization. What questions did that customer or client have for you? What did you tell people about your nonprofit? Where did you tell them how to get to you? So the way to practice this in real life is in a spreadsheet or just even on a piece of paper, write the questions that you regularly get on the left-hand side of the paper and then the right-hand question side, write down content as a result. So how do I weatherproof my golf bag? Turn that into a content lesson on how to weatherproof your bag in five minutes. These questions that you get asked on a regular basis are gonna be great subject lines and headlines for social media. It's really just that simple. So when we're talking about subject lines as, as means of transition, the subject lines are the first thing your audience sees before deciding whether or not to open your email. You only have a couple of sections to capture their attention and prove why your content is worth reading. There are a lot of tips out there about how to write a subject line. Here are a few that, that we think are actually helpful. Have it be no more than five to eight words long. Keep it short and sweet. Include numbers in your subject line. So it makes what you're saying immediately quantifiable and lets readers know exactly what they can expect. Great example is top three benefits to volunteering this summer, for instance. Finally, you want to encourage action. You want to include a call to action to get them to open the message immediately. One example of this is something as simple as schedule your consultation today, or even including a deadline to create a sense of urgency. One example using this is summer sale ends this Friday. So once you've written your subject line, this actually doubles up at the end. On the, as the headline when you write your email posts to social media. Great thing about having a service like Constant Contact is it actually recognizes your subject line and then automatically makes it your social media posts headline. It's one of the great reasons why we like it. So remember though, you don't actually have to stick to your own content and create everything yourself. One of the biggest misconceptions about creating content for an email campaign is you're actually responsible for writing every single post or email, which just isn't true. There are a lot of different resources you can use to find content that your audience is going to find valuable. For example, you could use interviews, testimonials, like from a staff member or a satisfied customer. You do blogs, you could do social media, you could find them uh, having special guests industry news, or even survey results from asking your customers what exactly they want to hear. All of these places will help you find a, a lot of really great content that all you have to do then is cite the source. But in order, in doing so, you also want to make sure that everything that you're sharing does look like you. Jenna just stepped back in, so let me stop and ask Jenna, do we have any questions that we need to answer? Uh, no. Excellent. I love it. I love it when we're. I love it when we're being informative and educational, and entertaining all the, all at the same time. And so humble too. I know. I, I, I like to be humble, but Jen, Jenna's got an ego about her. Yeah. It's just one of her things. So whatever content you share, wherever you decide to share it, you always want to make it look like you because you want people to remember you and that authentic self. So. Take the vibe of your material, make sure it's consistent, make sure the colors are consistent, choose the tone in which you're speaking. Uh, all of that's very simple and easy to do. Make it engaging with visual, visuals as well. 
by and large, click-through rates increased by hundreds of percents when you include pictures, product demos, and videos. What are some kind of videos that you can use? Well, you can do product demos, you can do a customer testimonial, or even a promotion for your business. So this particular uh, pajama program was doing an end of the year push for warm winter donations, and they made a video to recap their mission. I'm not gonna share it with you because it's a little on the sad side, but they got the word out by promoting uh, this video using their marketing channels, uh, specifically their email newsletter and then their Facebook page, and they got a tremendous result of it. So if you're gonna include cam images, make sure that you only have three or few Make sure that they're clickable, meaning that if you click on the image, it takes you somewhere. If you have a video, make sure it's under 90 seconds. We, people just don't have the attention span to sit and watch 10 minute videos, but under about 90 seconds to two minutes is gonna be perfect. So if we're talking about email marketing, one of the best things you can do is actually avoid using multiple columns. Make it one column, because if you make it one column, the presentation is gonna be the same on a PC as it is gonna be on a mobile device. Remember, I told you earlier that mobile devices are over half of the people who use email. So we wanna make sure that any presentation that we make looks just as good on email as it looks anywhere else. In addition to that, we also wanna make sure that we uh, don't use tiny fonts. Uh, this is especially relevant to me as opposed to Jenna as I get older because I have trouble reading things uh, on my phone unless it's in really big fonts. But uh, you could fit smaller things in a 9 to 12 point font, but again, who can really read it? Uh, what I recommend, at least 12 points or higher, 22 points or higher for headlines, and then uh, make sure that there's contrast between the text and, and, and the background. Finally, limit your images. The more images you put on an email, that that's, doesn't equate to success. Have it be no more than about one to three images. Make sure that they're great and make sure that they're clickable as well. Okay, so now that we know what we're after, we know what we're gonna ask of our audience. Now we're gonna actually promote the message. So the good news is we've done a lot of the hard part once we figured out where we need to be and what content we're trying to promote. We talked about the 80-20 rule before. Now let's really get into that 20% because that's really where the meat of our marketing is gonna be and where we're encouraging our audience to really take action. But how exactly do we do that? So let's assume for uh, the sake of discussion, your number one objective is to drive more revenue through donations or through sales. So how do we get this really pretty scary goal to actually be putting money in the bank? Calls to action is a clear link between asking for what you want and actually getting it. This is the lifeline of success in, in marketing and especially in email marketing. So what exactly is a call to action? It's a specific action your customers are going to be taking to help you reach your goal. A lot of times you're asking your readers to do a, a visit a, a specific page or do a thing that actually helps you relate your goals. So when we're talking about call to action, that's what, we're, that's what we mean. Unfortunately, we can't force anybody to take an action, but there are things we can do to entice people to make that action much more likely. So for an example, a company called Create Debate was able to increase clicks in their email marketing by making it look like a button instead of standard text, and that, and that grew 45% uh, uh, in click-through. That's exponential compared to the normal click-through rate, which is generally about five to 10%. So when you pick a template in Constant Contact or any email service provider, uh, having move buttons and having really bright calls to action is gonna help grow that audience number as well. So here's an example of the major impact a button can have on your goal. So on the left-hand side, you can see I've got a regular email from like Outlook or Gmail or something like that. And then on the right, there's an email from Constant Contact. So what do you notice between the, what do you notice, Jenna, in the difference between these two emails? Well, right off the bat, visually, the one on the right is much more interesting because it's got different colors and everything's larger and it has the rope image. Yeah, visually, it's much more exciting to look at than a three paragraph uh, text, right? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and also my, I, I know just because I am a millennial, if I got the message on the left, I would be suspicious that it's not actually from a real, a person. real company. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point. So with regular email, you get a limited number of emails. You, you can send it once. You have no control over the formatting. You have no control over branding. You have no idea if anybody read your email and were reported. But on the right-hand side, you get a beautiful template. It's customizable. It's mobile responsive. It's easy to use. It matches your logo and matches your colors. And you've got actionable features like that big giant button at the end, bottom of the page there that says, ask us how. And most importantly, you get trackable results. So here's some best practices about designing a really awesome call to action. Narrow it down, only have one specific call to action as opposed to many. Statistically, if you have just a single call to action, it's gonna increase your clicks by 371%. That's a boatload and extra clicks if you're only asking your audience to do one thing. Next, make sure you use actionable language like visit our website, order online, register by April 1st. Those are all actionable things. Next, make sure that it's above the scroll line. What's the scroll line? Well, it's that place on the screen much that the, the user has to scroll down to see more stuff. Anything that's above the scroll line is going to get a lot more action than anything below. Think of it like the newspaper. The most important news is always above the fold. So if you're asking people to take action, you also want to create clickable buttons. We've talked about that before. It, it's clearly met, showing what exactly you want somebody to do. And if you do it right and present only the one button, that's a great call to action as well. So back to, back to the half moon folks. Uh, and what their goal was, was to increase the, the class attendance over the next three months. What, what did they do for a call to action? View the schedule. What they're doing is preempting the idea that you're actually going to come in. They're actually saying, pick the time that you are going to come in. They're not even, they're, they're granting the premise that you, of course, will come in. The next question is, when are you going to come in? So for all of you, you're, you're all gonna have different calls to action based on the goal that I asked you to write a little earlier. So for example, if you wanna drive traffic, you might ask people to visit your website. If you're looking to increase your sales, uh, you might ask people to buy today or schedule an appointment or something like that. So think back on the goal you wrote earlier and then look at some, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and look at some of the examples that we, that we gave a little earlier. If you see some different points in your life cycle of your business, your goals might change and some of those calls to action might be a little bit more relevant. So here's, real, here's why it's really important to focus on the top objective that you choose for your organization. How many, how many of you have considered when thinking about your call to action where it's gonna take your readers when, when they click? How about where you intend to drive your readers? Simply put, the most direct path you can provide to your readers, the most likely you are going to accomplish your goal. So when you design that call to action, make sure it's very simple and as direct as possible. So where exactly does your call to action go? Well, last year I met an animal rescue organization that uh, really, really, really needed volunteers. So. Uh, they'd been sending emails to their subscriber list where people would click on the call to action and be taken to the website where they had to find the link to download the PDF form and fill it out and save it on their computer and then put it into an email and send it back. I don't know about you, but that just sounded, sounded exhausting and I didn't even do it, do it. And then after the fact, the organization had to manually input all the volunteer information into their database which just took up a huge amount of manpower. So instead of doing what they really needed to be doing, which is focusing on saving animals and rescuing animals, they were spending a lot of huge time actually doing basically data entry. And most importantly, they had no idea how many volunteers they were missing out on because they started the process and never actually finished. So a couple of things we did to, to sort of change the game. They had a good foundation for their message. They had great calls to action but they hadn't really considered all their options in executing their goal. So what we did is we set them up with an online form that integrated with their volunteer database. It allowed readers to click 
to volunteer, immediately get taken to that form, enter in their contact details and volunteer preference, and then it automatically populated the database. So this really simple change that, that we did by just redirecting pe where people would go by simplifying the application process, not to mention the time they saved by not having to enter in the data, they gained uh, 11 new volunteers last year, which was actually 10% over goal. So simple things like trying to be more efficient in how you're presenting yourself actually really do make a difference. Here's another uh, example of a uh, company that runs an annual gala event. So they sent email invitations instructing people to RSVP via email, and the registration lim limit was 500 people. So as you can imagine, they really didn't couldn't keep up, and it uh, got really, really messy. They didn't know what information they were supposed to provide, how they were supposed to pay for the event, anything like that. So what we ended up doing was creating an event management tool that automated their event management and provided their attendees with an easy way to register, easy way to pay, and then even gave them a, a barcode in their email so they didn't even have to bring a ticket to their event. So this was a clear call to action win because we saved them so much time in filling out the correct information the correct time. Last year, they sold out all the tables two weeks prior to the event. Yeah, we could skip over this. It's kind of more of the same. Okay, so we talked about choosing the right message, where to put it, how to build through content, that it, it we've that great executable call to action. How exactly do we measure that success? How do exactly do we know if we achieved our original goal? Jenna, here's your cute animal photo. Aw, thank you. It's got a little pencil in its hand. I know. Oh my uh, he bit me after I took that picture. <laughs> I'm impressed that you were able to stage that yourself, Trigby. I'm impressed <laughs> that he could measure 15 inches. <laughs> so you might have heard the phrase in the past, if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. It really is true. Uh, reports, information, data are going to help you determine if you met, you met the, your goal at the beginning uh, uh, that we talked about at the beginning. So depending upon what your goal is, here are some basic goals, like getting more opens, getting more clicks, et cetera. Uh, you, you need to use an online service provider like Constant Contact to actually help you track that information. We'll talk a little bit about that now. So here's some results that some of the businesses that we work with use to measure their success. Again, we talked about hearts and tails already. They uh, increased their volunteers by just making the, the uh, process simpler. The winter gala wanted to make sure that they weren't spending an excessive amount of time on their uh, on, on their registration. This automated everything together. And no matter what your organization is really trying to achieve, all of these programs and all of these things that you can get through Constant Contact or any service provider help you achieve your goal because it's going to show you. Number one, how many people opened the communications that you've provided with them. In providing, getting that open rate, you can actually start to evaluate the best day and time that it, it, you have to reach your audience. So the way you do that is you take a list of the people who open your email, see by and large, on the average, what was the best day, by and large, what was the best time. Next, uh, how valuable was your subject line? Is that something that you need to tweak by following some of the rules that we talked about a little earlier? And finally, did they really recognize that it was coming from you? Might be a simple thing of changing that, but a lot of times uh, I can't even tell you how many times I get an email from a company that says info at something something, ABC company. I uh, meet a lot of people in my job here at BusyWeb and I've never ever met anybody named info. <laughs> Send it from uh -huh. who you, thank you, there, there we go. Hopefully you're all laughing at home. Uh, make sure that it's from a real person. Make sure that it's from a person that, that your audience is gonna recognize. So the industry metric for open rates is generally about eight to 28%. We're really good at this. So we end up getting between 30 and 40 by and large, but so these are you know, mostly averages. So if what you're doing is in that range, then by and large, you're, you're on track. But there's a great likelihood, though, that if you follow the best practices that we laid out here and previously, you're going to actually increase that. 
Next, you want to look at click-throughs. You want to know whether or not your call to action was simple enough and that people are actually taking the action that you want them to take. Uh, is your link really standing out? Is it something that is not seeable or is it really, can, can, can you do a better job in any follow-up emails? I'm sure a lot of you, like I do, get emails that you didn't really feel that applied to you, so they just you just delete it and you move on. By checking the targeted content, you're actually able to check and make sure that your customers are actually interested in the content that you're getting. By and large, again, a, a good click-through rate is going to be about 10 to 20%. If you're getting 20%, that's really, really great. So let's take a moment, Jenna, do we have any questions before we uh, kind of wrap this up today? Mm, nope. Awesome. Do you have any questions, Jenna? Hmm. I don't know, Trigby. You're just so thorough that it's hard to think of one. Yeah, she's not the best color woman in the business for nothing, folks. <laughs> Your check's in the mail. I appreciate it. And my ego has grown just that little bit from you saying something that's clearly not true. So, all right. <laughs> How do we do this? Everything that we've talked about today, it's intended to help you grow your business. It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be easy. You can start today. This is easy enough to do. So if you're just getting started, here's where I want you to start. Number one, write your goal down. Make sure it's a specific goal. Make sure it's got a specific timetable. Second, design a call to action. Make sure that the message gets to your target audience and it's designed to get them to take an action. If you share this with uh, somebody that you love and they say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next, you need to rewrite it. Third, last but not least, make sure you're measuring your, your results so you get to keep sending, you get to keep learning, keep synthesize what you're doing to make the necessary adjustments with each email. So if you actually get to benefit from a more direct call to action and an easier way to manage your marketing, uh, we recommend Constant Contact. Everything that we talked about here is available in one place. It's a great tool. It, they have people who do nothing but coach you on how to grow your success. In addition to that, here at BusyWeb, we are, most everybody is a Constant Contact expert. We've been a Constant Contact uh, authorized solution provider for going on five years now. There are five experts in the state of Minnesota. Four of them work here. Bottom line that I want to share with you is that this is easy. It seems really complicated, but if you work the process that we've laid out today, and again, if you have gone over it too fast, uh, this will automatically get posted to YouTube as soon as we're done. And I'd be more than happy to share this slide deck with you if you just email us. All the marketing tools, get them together, write out a plan, and then execute the plan. If you need help, we are more than happy to help you here at BusyWeb, and I'll show you my email address again in just a second. Finally, here's how I want you, here's one more place to, to, to start and think about. If you go to busyweb.com slash buzz, first of all, take a look at our new website because we just launched a new version of it on July 1st. Hopefully you like it. We put a lot of hard work into it and think it's uh, really great. But if you go to busyweb.com slash buzz, we will give you for free an audit of your website that tells you everything that's going right and everything that you can improve on your website. It's a good baseline. We use it a lot here when we deal with clients to make sure that everything is working appropriately and it's we understand that what exactly has to be done versus what, what should be done. Second, if you want to sign up for a free 60-day trial, the second address there at busyweb.com slash cc is going to help you get to constant contact. It's a no must, no fuss sign up. You literally get 60 days to try it out. They will never ask you for a credit card until you're ready to pull the trigger. Uh, it's a great way to kind of to kick the tires and get started, and you can find it through that link there. If you'd like to join our list, again, this is a constant contact tool that we like here. Go ahead and text BIZZY, B-I-Z-Z-Y, to 22828. You'll automatically get joined on our email list. And uh, you, we uh, send out our busy webinar topics once a week. And we also send out promotional e emails and educational emails that go, go out as well. 
Thanks everybody for joining us. Again, I'm gonna leave this on screen for a minute or so. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, comments, if you uh, want a copy of the deck, I'd be more than happy to share this with you or answer any questions you might have. Uh, you can reach me at Trigvi. You can see how it's spelled there because it's a funny name. And Trigvi at busyweb.com or you can reach us at, on Facebook at facebook.com slash busyweb or even on Twitter at, at busyweb. Uh, I fully admit I will not be answering on Facebook or Twitter. That's Jenna. That's why we keep her around. Yep. And she's <laughs> She'll get back to you within a, a, a jiffy. So uh, before I, I sign off, Jenna, do we have any straggling questions that we have to answer? Uh, no, doesn't oh, look like perfect. it. Well, thanks everybody for joining us live. If you haven't joined us live and you're hearing us on YouTube, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Feel free and check out some of our other webinars. Other than that, uh, Dave will be back next Wednesday. And we'll see you then. Bye. Oh, come on. Say it for real. Okay. Bye.